Heather McDonald has got the juices scoop. When you're on the road, when you're on the go, Juicy Scoop is the show to know. She talks Hollywood tales, her real life Mr. Segment, serial data, and serial sister. You'll be addicted and addicted fast to the number one tabloid real life podcast. Listen in, listen up. Woo woo. Heather McDonald. Juicy Scoop. Hello and welcome to Juicy Scoop. Happy first Juicy Scoop episode of 2023. And to kick off the first episode, I have my first ever guest. Yeah. Chris Frangiola. Starting another year. Starting another year, another delight. Thank you. Got got himself a big cup of coffee before coming here because it's a rainy, (laughs) chilly day. As you can tell, I I was all cute when I left the house. Then I got poured on. Oh, my God. It's cold out. Yeah, cold. It has Um, been for quite like a while now. We've been getting a lot of rain. I know. It's going to be quite a spring here in Los Angeles. Everything's going to be popping. I know. I said, now with all this rain, are they ever going to, will there ever be a news report that's like, hey, because of all this rain. The drought's good over. Good news. No. No, they'll never say good news. No. They'll be like, get ready for the floods. <laughs> get ready for no. your house to slide down. There's never any. No, there's no good news. There's never no. any. <laughs> They're like you used to do all the time. Yeah. Uh, you used to do people like, like there's one good news story at the end of every news show, like the cat in the tree or something. That's yeah, the one like, you always used to do. And now we have a good story about this is mittens, and mittens climbed up the tree, and we see that, um, yeah. Got her down. Got her down with some of that yeah. delicious food. And, and that's about it. Yeah, that's like it. About yeah. 10 seconds of cute, and then everything else is murder and mayhem. <laughs> <laughs> it is awful. Um, but I, I had a great trip. Yes, you sure did. Here's Peter and I in love after we got rid of the boat. Can I ask you? Oh, oh, oh the boat was an issue? I, I did a long Patreon on it. Uh, you know how to get there, patreon.com. That's a great picture Tuesday. of both of you. This was so much more fun. We Okay, the boat was, we had a moment on the boat. Yeah. Perfectly in a shortened way, because I got into great detail in the Patreon. Um, I, everybody said this is the greatest trip they ever took. To okay? this particular my, I have area. four friends that have done it. Oh, okay. my God, you're going to love it. We did it. You get the catamaran. You go from all these different islands, and each place is cuter and more green water and what you love. It's so right. great. What I didn't realize is that all those people that had the greatest trip ever went on a catamaran. With, with a, a captain and a stew slash chef. Uh huh. And we, because Peter's a captain, on our and on our catamaran, we didn't want like some stranger with us. We wanted to each have our own room, including Peter and I. We had our own room yeah. because I was like, I don't want to hear complaining about my makeup. I don't want the boys to fight. Everyone had their own room and own bathroom. So it's just the four of us on this boat. Okay. And Peter's the captain, and he can tell the boys what to do and whatever. Right. So I underestimated how much work it was as far as figuring out how to get to the place, buoying it up, securing the buoy at 6.59 the morning of not, oh, this isn't and are our you buoy. Working? Are you working? Are you, a, are you a, a, a boat hand? No, or? I am no help at all. No. <laughs> but I did have to, okay. unfortunately, I didn't realize that I was also expected to cook bacon and oh. eggs, sometimes on high seas. Sometimes it was rough <laughs> with like bacon yeah, grease like that. splashing me. And... Um, you yeah. don't see that on Below Deck. Do they have the bacon a- episode where <laughs> they're getting splashed by hot grease? No, yeah, and then and um, and so it was it was a lot, okay. And then you know, and and Peter's, you know, and Drake and Brandon weren't even into this, but I was like, well, you have to come because there's no other couple that we could invite that yeah. want to come. We put out the feelers. I think we might have mentioned it to you. We mentioned it to my sister and her husband. We mentioned it to John and Sarah. Nobody yeah. was biting to be on a loan on a boat with us, okay? So okay. I'm like, the only people that yeah. can come are the stew hands that I birthed, okay? okay. This is Peter's dream. Let's do it. <laughs> but is there ever a time where you say, hey, listen, we're going on a very, let's, we're going to do no bacon this week. I feel like the Tobias <laughs> McDonald houses, they're putting down a lot of bacon. 
Well, what is great is this. Where'd you even get is, the bacon in that? I'll area. tell you because this this is a juicy scooper. She has a company called Logan. Wait, sorry, Local Legend. Okay. She and her cute husband and four year old son. They live there. She's a juicy scooper. She reached out. She's like, I'll help you with the provision. So they oh, got funny. all this food for us, and you know yeah. we paid them, but they did all the shopping. Right. And so Peter did the order. So Peter did, you know, like I, yeah. I, because I thought, aren't we going to stop at these like beautiful places and have breakfast and stuff? No, I was doing breakfast, and then, <laughs> and then it's like, oh, you can't put anything down the sink. So at one point, I'm like, can I just go in the ocean and wash these dishes? Why are we on this like huge yeah. expensive boat? So anyway, he would tell Drake what to do, and then Drake, and then Brandon had a job, and you know, and one time right. he screwed up the job. And it's just like, and it, okay, so we had it for a week. Because yeah. first, when it first came up, I said, could we do like three days at a beautiful resort, then maybe three nights on the boat, and then like three nights at a beautiful hotel? Well, at this high, at the time, um, you have to pay for seven days. Okay. Right. I'm like, that's a long time on the boat. And he goes, well, I got us at the Ritz Carlton after. And we can give up the boat one day early and go to the Ritz Carlton if we want. And I'm like, okay, well, we'll maybe we'll do that. Maybe we'll have the greatest time. Yeah. Well, two days before the end of the boat, I I had the moment from vacation where Beverly D'Angelo oh, just says, Chevy, Clark, yeah. can we just yep. give back the boat? The right. kids aren't having fun. Because so she, he was screaming at Drake one more time to do the buoy, okay? Yeah. Tie the buoy. And Drake finally just goes, I I'm done. I don't want to do it anymore. I don't care if we never tie up till we leave. Now, we still had that night for sure to spend. Right. And that's when I did the Clark. And, you know, right. we don't want to even go to Magic Mountain anymore. Whatever that scene was for vacation. <laughs> and Peter was probably becoming Robert Wagner at that point, like thinking about it. Giving you a push. Oh, no, there was. And, I mean, and then I go, and he goes, I mean, because then every other time, so will you buoy a couple times? Do we have a buoy? Is it first come, first service? It's not okay. Can we anchor? Will we drift? Oh, well, now we're anchoring. So I need, if you wake up in the middle of the night, can you just flash a light and make sure we're not drifting? No. I'm done. All of this is giving me, oh so my then, God. So I, then, this is the worst. So then I, so then, you know, and so then I say, Peter, can you just call the Ritz Carlton and see if they can take us tonight? Like, we are done. The kids are spent. You know, they've been screamed at. Like, they, and then all of a sudden, he's like, Peter's like, oh, the, finally, the final time we do it, he has Drake steer, and then he does the buoy. And he's like, I guess that's the way we should have done it the whole time. Yeah. Yeah, because, you know, the, right. kid, the kids didn't take the fucking sailing class. Right. And um, so, anyway. To put it nicely, I underestimated the work and I overestimated us as a functional family who respects each other. Because, <laughs> yeah, we don't. Is there really? I don't think there is, a, especially on a boat. I believe the dysfunction gets heightened and when you're in situations like that. Now, the, all vacations. Now, the good news is the weather was fabulous. I love the Virgin Islands BVIs as a tropical vacation. I love the water, I love the weather. Yeah. We would go to these beautiful places could always get a table at the beautiful restaurant. A lot of them have been redone since the hurricane. Yeah. You could just get on a lounge chair, which is like unheard of, you know, in California. Right. So I was like, this is stunning. This is great. Um, all of our travel cooperated. Like we're so lucky with all that. Yeah. So everything that was out of our control behaved. Everything that was in our control, like our behavior towards one another was not great. Yeah. So anyway... All of a sudden, Peter, I hear Peter on the phone. Oh, hi, Kelly, in a nice voice. It's Peter. I was just wondering, is that room available? Is our room available? Yeah. And the, the rest of the day was the greatest day I had. So you got to the Ritz Carlton. We, fi we finished with a tour around Epstein Island on our own and looked at Wait, it. Wait, is it actual Epstein Island? Yeah, it's Jeff oh, Epstein Island. That's the one? That's, that's on our way back oh. to St. Thomas. And then had a great time at the Ritz Carlton. And then the Juicy Scooper from Local Legend. She's like, we'll pick you up, and they have like a speedboat. Yeah. And they picked us up, and we went all around, and we saw the the scary. I didn't tell you we went to Scary yeah. Island, where Ramona and all them is a famous housewife episode. And what I also realized as I was laying at the lounge chair, uh -huh. I was under the impression that the only way we could go to these places that everyone said was the greatest trip ever, 
the soggy dollar and the willy tees and all this yeah. is if you went by boat. I didn't know that you could actually be at the Ritz Carlton. Just walk to it. No, go on a boat for the day. Oh yeah, of course. Come back to yeah. your hotel room, take a shower, sleep in your bed. Yeah. Like, because everything's pretty close. Uh huh. So now I know. That's the way of doing it. The next place time. I want to go to is St. Bart's. Okay. Uh, I heard it's real bougie, real fun. Yeah. And that's where I'd like to go. And then I said, going forward, only nice hotels. And if we ever have a kitchen situation in an Airbnb or whatever, it we will have to hire daily maid service on a vacation. I'm done yeah. with the cooking and the cleaning and being told to cook and clean. And... Um, yeah, that's not a vacation. No, and then and also like with the kids, right. we like like Moon Palace in Cancun is our favorite vacation. We've gone there twice. Okay, it's huge. There's golf. There's water slides. There's yeah. mini golf. There's bikes. It's all inclusive. Now that my kids are that, age, that's what we need. Everyone can go have their fun at three o'clock. They want to go back to the room and be by themselves. Right. Fine. Well, that's... in the end, we had fun. The last six days, we had fun. It looked like nobody fun. was followed, mean to each other at the Ritz Carlton. Nobody was good. mean. Yeah, how could you be? I mean, nobody that's what was you mean. Want. It was very fun and nice. And you just eat dinners at restaurants and ate everything. dinners at restaurants. Yeah. And my that was my vacation. Now you oh here were, just, here were the boys. I thought this looked like a paparazzi photo. It does look like a paparazzi. Oh, and then at the photo. end of the trip, Brandon let me take him to the salon and we got him a haircut. And that oh. was a big treat for me. How does it look? Fabulous. Really? Oh, that's nice. I let him have his long hair because I was like, I don't want to be that mom that says a kid can't have long hair. But like then, Celine Dion when her kid <laughs> had the long hair. But then Drake convinced him and I'm like, it's so yeah. much better. And he's like, yeah, I like it better, mom. So oh, we, good. Now yeah. tell me about your... I was in, <laughs> my vacation was much different because I have a three-year-old and it's, big, yeah. it's a big difference. Yeah. We were in Hawaii. Yes. It was lovely. You know, Maui. I loved watching your stories about, yes, you. about saving the... Um, the, the chairs. chairs, which I kind of sometimes felt guilty because I would save four, and I knew never was all four of us going to lay down there. So by the second day, I go, I only need two. Yeah, I didn't feel guilty. Okay, uh, <laughs> uh, I didn't. <laughs> I was a three a uh, three chairs. Okay, and at six a.m. You know, walk down. Okay, and it was it was incorporated with a Starbucks walk, so I wasn't going down there for the chair. Yeah, you know, it was more just to get out of the room. Yeah, and, early riser. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Early riser. And then I saw pe other crazy people doing it, and right. they, you know, people really, they're all gone by 7 a.m., just with books and, you know, poop put, put, put anything on there. Yeah. You know, just one sandal, and that's your chair for the day, I guess. But anyway, so that's what it was art. You know, it's just a lot of wet. We were wet. You're wet the whole week. You know, I got a three-year-old, so it's a lot of slides. Did you do any snorkeling or anything? No. Yeah. So you weren't afraid of the sharks because you were no. Never I, we went in out on like uh, like tubes, like out far into the water on like tubes, you know, oh. just out far. You can go out. That's nice. where the sharks are. I know. I thought about that shark lady quite a bit actually. I asked the people. I said, "What's the shark situation?" And they said, "We really don't have sharks in yeah. Virgin Islands." So that, and we did see some turtles and some fish and stuff like that. We saw a lot of turtles. A lot of turtles. Yeah. A lot of wet chicken fingers, you know, just a lot of la sitting on a pool chair with wet chicken fingers. Because that's what you Because your order. hands are wet. Yeah. Chicken fingers. People are like, how's the food? I'm like, the wet chicken fingers are great. But it was the weather perfect? Absolutely perfect. Great. I mean, it is what paradise. You I, know? Mean, when like, I, I mean, I feel, and I, it was your travel, because all of our flights was on. Yeah, it, I feel very lucky. I know. But we were going from L.A. to Hawaii, so, I mean, weather-wise, what could possibly Right, but I'm happen? just saying, like, when you see all the th yeah. the things that are... We were lucky, thank yeah. God. Um, Very so, yeah, lucky. we didn't have any issues. Well, let's it talk was, about all the juices all all good. That, that happened in the world. But I noticed, I noticed Peter what? goes a uh, swim shirt. Eventually, you have to go swim shirt. No, right? this, this was just a shirt at night. Oh, okay. I mean, I, I went it, swim shirt, too, a little in Hawaii, and I felt like... Not you actually make a, swimming in it. Oh, one time he did, because he did get sunburned. In life, that you got to... Yeah. Eventually, you become swim shirt. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. So moving on, um, have you heard about this Boston mom I have. who's missing? So very sad story. There is a Boston mom. She's only five two. She has three kids. Live in a very nice house. She manages some properties, and she had a flight. Uh, what does the five two have to do with anything? Oh, because I she's think just because she's to, yeah one yeah, fifteen five two yeah. Don't laugh. I'm not laughing. Okay. Because they, they in, in the article, it says 5'2". Well, I two, think two. that like, is kind of an... What does that have to do with it? I do think that is sort of an interesting thing. So 
The story is. I mean, they that got Brittany Griner. She was like six foot eight, you know. So you could still abduct people. Well, she wasn't know. abducted. I know. You know what I mean. All right. So anyway, this is a classic missing mother of three. Okay. Yeah. She was had a flight a couple days later that was set, but then, according to her husband, went that you know two days early in a Lyft or a Uber to the airport. And then two days later, he's like, she went to D.C. or something to check on this property. It was an office emergency, and her office can't get a hold of her, and neither can I. Okay. Then, so they don't know where she is. There's no record of her getting on a flight. Yeah. Because her ticket was for two days later, and there's no record of her getting in a Lyft or an Uber. And, um, and then there's a fire at her house. Yeah, I heard that. So that, and then the husband, in an unrelated case, was um, facing charges or trial for selling fake Andy Warhol paintings. Oh. And anyway, today he was arrested. It always. Why do they wait so long? Well, they don't wait so long. I know I think they kind of they, have to they, do ha- a they have to get the ev- enough evidence to arrest them, and then. They hope that they get to them to a place where then once they do get them, that they'll maybe be you but know, do you more think of a spell. They do full on investigations of other people and they know full well who it is. You know, like the detectives. They're like, we'll pretend we're investigating other people. Yes. But in a few days, we're going to arrest this guy because it's him. Yeah. And that, like, you don't even report your wife missing for two days. Yeah. And, like, yeah. And the whole, oh, she took a flight. I mean, and yeah. And the house fire. I mean, that's. Burning it, evidence or something. I just right? think if you said she's got in a lift, I mean, what is your story? Are you that like, oh, she walked out and it wasn't really a lift, or she? What's he going to say? Oh, I guess she got in a car that she thought was a lift, but she didn't check the license plate and just right. happened to be a guy looking to kidnap somebody. Right. And she just happened to be there with her suitcase, and then he never took her to the airport. And mm-hmm. where's the exchange ticket? Where yeah. was the ticket that she was supposed to go? I mean, the things. It, right. it was like not a good. So cover they did up. arrest the, the husband. Yes. Uh, S- suspi- suspicion of murder, or um, so now he'll tell where. Well, where she we is. don't know. Yeah. I mean, if he probably, I'm sure we'll have an attorney and not say anything. Yeah. Right. 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 This is not like is he, that. Him. Yeah. Okay. Uh, very sad. I don't think she's okay. So then, of course, the Idaho murder that happened. <laughs> yeah. We got this guy. I got Brian. him. Brian. Yeah. I know everything. So do I, kind of. I'm yeah. up on this one. So, wow. This yeah. is just... So, when I I did a Juicy Crime on it, which is on my Patreon, and I, we talked about it. And one thing I did say was, I wonder, you know, there was... I had two schools of thought back a month ago when we did it. Like, mm-hmm. it, could it be these boyfriends or a guy that felt slighted either by the frat boyfriend that was there or is it a student but then it was it didn't really seem like it was it seemed like it was an inexperienced killer but somebody that had some something to do with like crime you know whatever like uh, military or whatever and so i'm like well if it is just like a random person that like which it is right yeah yeah. that wanted to see if he could kill and get away with it which now we're realizing it is i'm like i would love to see what he watched on netflix this year like right. I just feel like the Dahmer and it, and it turns out, but he was it, also a, a criminology right. major. And now it turns out there really are a lot of similarities between him and um, why can't it? Ted Bundy? Yeah, who also killed the sorority girls? Who, yes, right. So yes, I mean you know obviously they have they have DNA. He left, which I didn't realize. He, you know, the knife that he killed with. He left the sheath. He left the the leather sheath that yeah. covers it, mm-hmm. that had his DNA on it. Yeah. He um, did like a lot of mistakes for being such like you know getting his PhD in criminology. Like I guess they were tracking him for a while. So they were. I mean, the FBI did a pretty good job of not because people were like, there, there's no leads. They, I think they had plenty of leads, and they were tracking him for a while and wanted to make sure yes. that they got everything. So there there were no mistakes in arresting him. Because yeah. I heard they had the police pull him over, I think it was in Indiana, while he was traveling with his father, t- two different times, in order just to get hand pr- fingerprints from him. No, and also to, vis- yeah. to film the, the hands, because they thought, by based on the knife that he used, oh. that there might be some um, injuries to his hand. Okay. 
And apparently people saw him wearing gloves and whatnot after the murders, yeah. taking out his garbage, shopping at a grocery store. I thought it was because of the fingerprints things, but it might have yeah. been to cover any. Oh, that's um, interesting. Yeah, he, um, you know, and I, I think it's interesting, like, you know, he has a public defender. It's not yeah. like the parents are stepping in to pay for a private defender. Right. And will he be the person like a Ted Bunny that wants to defend himself because he thinks he's so smart? Yeah. It does seem like he knew the at least one of the girls because – or definitely knew of the people because they show that the car was there um, for weeks yeah. prior. So he was stalking it. Yeah. Whether he knew any of them personally or he just sought out this place because he's obsessed with like whatever the fun life they had. Yeah. And then the biggest question is if he knew all about this place because he'd been stalking it, was his plan to kill the one target and the other people interrupted it? Or was his plan to kill everybody, including the two girls at the bottom? But the dog barking and stuff made him feel like, I better leave. And what about the other story that I had heard where the girl, the one girl who the, survived, the two girls who survived. Yes. Said she saw him in the house, like on the way out from the murders. Yes. That's okay, what so, I, okay, so, am I right in saying? So, yes. Yeah. So, during Thanksgiving. Okay. Um, right after Thanksgiving, the Friday after Thanksgiving, I went to a party at my friend's house out in Westlake. And, of course, we were talking about this yeah. crime. And this woman there goes, her daughter, who went to Calabasas or West, like whatever, her really good friend who's home for the weekend yeah. is an Idaho student. And she knows one of the survivors. Yeah. And the mom says, the girl saw him. Right. And she says to me, Heather, you cannot say this on your show. It right. is an open investigation. And this was the first I heard of it. And I was like, okay, wait, tell me what you... And um, she said she said that she saw his eyes. Yeah. And I'm like, how? He had a mask how? On. Yeah. How? And and I and when then what happened? Um, then she hid under the bed, and and I'm like, well, then why didn't she call? You know, in the morning, what what has happened? And the thing I said back then was the only and she, you know, so she's like, I, I think it's weird. I, like some people were like, is there something that some? I now we know this girl is you know was not involved at right. all or anything. Yeah, two yeah. girls. But she's like, what is that? And I, and the first thing I said was, all I can think about is that these kids are trained from five years old on about active shooters, and you're supposed to say, stay quiet, play dead. So if she did see something. Right. So from, she was under the impression when she sees this guy walking through the house. Her name's time Dylan. Was, Dylan, okay. Yeah. When she sees this guy walking through the house at the time, she thought, oh, this guy's a murderer? Or I here's what I thought. Mm -hmm. I thought this college house, whatever, could be some. I don't know. There's six of us here. Maybe somebody's hooking up with this guy and he's leaving at five o'clock, four o'clock in the morning, whatever. That's what I was under the impression. What it was. Mm -hmm. But you're saying she hid under the bed because she was scared that he was. Now I don't know if the I don't know if the hide under the bed is the thing because yeah. I'm like now listen I'm hearing it. The girl came right. and told this mom and her friend this. This mom told me okay. so it is. A couple times removed. Yeah. But I, in talking about it, I did not share with my listeners this part because I was like, I had not seen it on TikTok. I'd not seen it anywhere. Right. So I'm like, this is, you know, and I felt really badly for these two survivors, whatever the case might be. And I always think people are always so critical of how you're supposed to react in this situation. Right. And I thought, did, did she think something was weird? Could she have been still really drunk? Did they do some drugs and she was scared and again being quiet and silent and in being quiet and silent and being freaked out did she in fact fall asleep yeah. fall back to sleep right then wake up and be like okay because one of the things she said in her affidavit and stuff which is now public record is like that she said i heard um i i heard something upstairs or whatever I heard something from the roommates and and then someone's like, no, I'm going to help you or something. And then saw him come down. But I don't – I'm under the understanding that maybe he didn't see her or if he did see her, he realized that at that point the dog was barking according to witnesses. The yeah. dog was barking and the timeline of everything seems like they were killed around 4 something a.m. Right. That I, he would have killed her, which is a really weird, scary yeah. thing. Or – 
you know, his plan was only to kill the one girl and the other one was, you know, was in the room and then the other two woke up. But I don't know. Like, yeah. we'll soon, who right, knows right. what, because I don't, you know. But he, um, I think, so then I think what happened is then the girl, because there's such a weird thing about the 911 call. So the 911 call was um, initially someone's collapsed. Yeah. Someone's cla- and they're like, well, someone's collapsed. Four people are bloody murder. What is this call? What I think happened is she wakes up. And it was eight at hours 11. later, right? She wakes up at 11 or whatever. And now calls a male friend and was like, can you come over here? Because something really weird happened last night. Can you come here? And I think in between him getting there is when she did go upstairs. Yeah. May have seen something, ran out to the front and had like collapsed. And then he calls 911 when he finds her. Is that say, what happened? That That's what I, th- oh. everything I put together, and this is just my opinion, yeah. I think may explain the person collapsing original 911 call and maybe what happened in that she never did oh. go up there and investigate for exactly but the reason. But wouldn't they know and, and made I, the 911 again, call? Again, I th- isn't that easy to track? No, I think they. It, I think it might have been her phone, but it might have been with him. I oh. know that part. I'm not sure yeah. on, and I'm not. But I think, um, you know, and so you yeah. know, the survivor guilt and everything. Not that she could have saved them. Yeah. I mean, the fact that she was silent is probably the only thing that kept her alive. Because right. if this guy killed four people, what's ki- from him killing two more? Yeah. Um, you know, it's it's just like it's just so. But I think you're right. Like, I think a lot of it was a party house. Was this somebody hooked up? Was this someone that I know? He's yeah. wearing a mask. Like, we've seen everywhere and wear a mask for right. three years. It wasn't a ski mask. It was a mask, like a mask. It was for like a COVID, COVID mask. mask. Yeah, yeah, right. But she did say the bushy eyebrows. Yeah. And he has bushy eyebrows. Right. And that's what she saw. Wow. And, and if he had known that she identified him, which is why I didn't share it on my show and why they really wanted to, to be quiet. She could have very much been a target while he's going around in his yeah. white car and wearing gloves at grocery stores. Right. So they had to keep a lot of stuff quiet. And I, I think they did, you know, try to keep as much. And then the one bad, the one awful thing is there was some psychic on there. There was one psychic that predicted a lot of stuff about the actual killer, which was amazing. There was this other psychic that was saying it's this female professor and that female professor has since um, sued this woman. Oh, really? She had nothing to do yeah. with it. Yeah. But somehow she built a TikTok case that it's this female professor that did it. She's suing the psychic. <laughs> yes. On TikTok, oh, no. like for ruining her yeah. life. Wow. Well, yeah, I guess. You can't just say that. Oh. But this is the, I mean, I don't think in our lifetime we've ever like lived through hearing about it, discovering it, covering it, finding the person. Yeah. Like, all those other murders, I was either too young to know, like, the serial killers of, mm-hmm. you know, from the Manson to the Hillside Strangler yeah. to all that was, like, before our I know. time. This is, this is a – it's an interesting one. It's very Dexter-y. It's you know? hor- – yeah. Yeah. It is cr- it, horrible. But I really wonder if there's any connection. Do you feel that crime – Like, if he and... knew the girl or not. If he I don't knew know. the one girl I, see, or I not and not we got that. obsessed with her. Yeah. I know. I think they – I think we're going to find out something. I don't know. Yeah. Do you feel that crime and uh, and murder and things like that have ruined the color orange for everybody? <laughs> I feel like you can't. Nobody can wear an orange T-shirt anymore without looking like you've committed a murder in, your, I know. in a courtroom. I know. And you brought up Jen Shaw, yeah, which I'm going right. to get more uh-huh. into on Thursday's show. But obviously she got six and a half years. And in one of the episodes that um, – B- before she even admitted to being guilty and did her plea deal or whatever, yeah. um, they the girls had a slumber party and they went away to celebrate Jen before her big trial, and they all wore matching pajamas and they were orange. Oh, really? And I was like, I don't know if no one thought about that yeah. or if like the producers got them the yeah. orange one, like a wink, yeah. wink. This will be funny because those editors and producers are very into like right. popping things. Yeah, and uh, yeah. They need to go back to like the old, like the cartoon stripes, you know, but the when black you're, and white stripes. But when you're in orange when you're like awaiting trial. I think so. Once you're currently in prison, then they have their own look. It's like still an have, orange. No, I think there's different looks. Yeah, well, it depends on the prison, I think. But yeah. it's mostly kind of a 
that orange. Because or... Teresa, when Teresa Judice did her year, she wore like a gray thing. Oh, she might have been too. Yeah, yeah. It might be a, just if it's a. It's very similar to the jumpsuits that a lot of female stand-up <laughs> comics are wearing. <laughs> That's a hot look on the female stand-up comedy world. Just a onesie, Everyone Mike looks, Myers garage. Yeah, I work like at could, a garage. They could run right off stage and fix a car. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. God, it's one hour, girls. I know. You can't like, put on. You, you can't. Yeah, you can't put on uh, uh, two separates, uh, <laughs> pants and a shirt. Some yeah. uniforms for prisoners may be worn with a hat. Oh, a hat? some uniforms can be worn Ooh, with a hat. How fun. A little freedom. A little yeah, freedom there. Yeah, that is nice. Yeah. You can jazz it up with a hat. I just saw a prison video where this guy was doing like, you know how like um, after like you come out of like a game at like the crypto center, they they always do those like um, hot dogs with like bacon and like peppers and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that guy was make, making it in his room. Really? They let him have a stove and then he brings the wires up to like the air conditioning wow. unit. And yeah. he was making hot dogs? He was doing a whole like wow. festive like. Same thing you did on the boat. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of cooking. Oh my god! Oh, I just yeah yeah yeah. I'm done with the boat for a wow. minute. Wow, okay. so that's fun. Um, okay. Um, oh, I also want to just really quickly say about Jen Shaw. She is was trying to gain sympathy, obviously, before getting her six and a half years, and she wanted to make sure that her attorney let the judge know that she immigrated from Hawaii to Utah. Oh, and being an immigrant from Hawaii is you know a challenge yeah and therefore she should have a lighter sentence okay but you know hawaii is not is america yeah so she's it's not, not but, in fact yeah. an immigrant but you <laughs> yeah. know oh whatever. i know feel I sorry the, for you i went to a luau and i got the entire history of hawaii i don't know if you've gone to a luau i have gone to a luau and i, I it's cute for an hour i thought i saw your clip about it <laughs> yeah. where you're like i i always would see these families go on their trips to Christmas yeah. and they always had the luau photo. And I mean, I definitely had like a crying fight one time with Peter, like, why have we not taken the kids to Hawaii and done a luau photo? Yeah. So one year I took Brandon and my sister and her daughter to Hawaii because we had different spring breaks than, the, than our high school aged kids. Right. So I'm like, let's just the four of us go. And we did go to the luau in Maui at the Wana, Wailea or the Wailea, yeah. Grand Wailea. Yeah. And, that's like the big one. Yeah. And yeah. it was, yeah, because I'm like, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do the best. And yeah, the history is so fucking boring. Well, Sorry. I know. I, that, <laughs> I, that's the thing. Like the history of anywhere is boring. So, I, I, but the other thing is like, know your audience. You know, it's kind of like there's kids and there's old people and nobody's having a good time. Everyone is like, oh, and then the Hawaiian people, we, we got it. Oh, the yeah, yeah. <laughs> like the dancing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Where's the guys who spin the fire? Bring them out. Yeah, and then. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. Yeah. My kid's falling asleep here. He's full of uh, pork or whatever you served him. <laughs> and we need fire now. Yeah. 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 But it's one of those things, you know, you did it once. What's great about yeah. my age now. Is right. now now I have this complete relief that next time I go to a beautiful resort, which is all I want to do on vacation. So beautiful resorts, hook me up. I'm ready to sell your place. Can I ask you this question yes. now? What is your length? What what becomes too long? Is it five days, seven days? What's your length? This was the longest vacation I've ever been on, and it wasn't too long because I oh. I loved the Ritz Carlton situation. We had two bedrooms. Okay. We had two baths. We had a kitchen with maid service. Yeah. We had a huge balcony. So there's never a time where you're like, I got to get back home. No, I mean, I was excited when the day came, but I wasn't, I, yeah. I mean, because it was like horrible weather here and I still had that a couple was, days yeah. to recover before getting the show, you know, right, right. getting back to work. So, but now that I've done it, now when I do go to a beautiful resort, like a LeBlanc and Cabo, whatever, I have noticed I will not have to go to the marina to go on a boat, a sunset cruise. I will not have to get in a, in a, in a van and see a three-legged dog to go to some other authentic restaurant. I love a three-legged dog. You know you're in a pretty good. You're you know the margarita is going to be good when you pass a couple of three-legged dogs on the way to the resort. How are these three-legged dogs living? Like I'm kind of like God. I mean that's I mean the best thing about a three-legged dog is they don't seem to even know. They they just continue on with their life as if they got four legs. That doesn't they don't it doesn't put a hiccup in their giddy up. 
at all. They are just moving along. But I mean, like, what's the the vets in Mexico? Like, forget about getting your BBL in Mexico. I think, take it off I think it's time to take your dog to yeah. a Mexico vet. Because, like, we have something wrong with their dog, and they're like, uh, $6,000 and, yeah. you know, whatever. And I'm like, wait, there's dogs in Mexico that don't even have all their legs that are, like, killing it, like, running around. Like, so. I, Do you ever see a two legged one? It just walks upright like a human. I've seen it. I, it's craziest thing. They, they walk like on their hind legs. I, yeah, but I mean, I don't need to go to zip lining ever again. Done it. Yeah. Done it. So you, so you, all right. You're so not I've done like everything. Me. Now I can just go to the resort. Yeah. And pop between the spa and the lounge chairs and Thank the dinners. You. Thank That's you. That's it. I'm done with all adventure. All adventure. I, I, uh, <laughs> Like, I've done everything I need to do in life. Me too. I don't need new adventures. Like, you hear people, when I was 75, I skydived for the nope. first time. I'm like, nope, nope, don't need it. I feel I've done it all I need to do. I don't need to learn anything new. No, uh, my anxiety is not spending the money that I've earned and leaving it to my children. Now I need to fucking start spending oh, it. Oh, that's a good way Now to live. I have more. I was, I was like, hey, I want to go. I was talking to... Uh, Robin, who's a juicy scooper, she is a, a she is a really good travel agent. And I said, "Listen, I've never gone to Europe. This is what I want, and I want these are the places I want to go, and I want to go to nice, beautiful hotels and beautiful restaurants." And I go, "I want to tell you something right now. I don't think I have to go to the Vatican." And I go, "Thank God my parents, you know, are not alive to hear this." Yeah. Um, because as a Catholic, I would think I'd be down to go to the Vatican. I go, "But really, I just want to go to the Amalfi Coast and see like beautiful stuff." Yeah. But I'm also like, hey, this isn't the last time I'm planning to go to Europe, but I have more anxiety about letting another year go by where I still look good in a bikini and I haven't broken a hip uh -huh. and I haven't gone on this trip yet. Yeah. Then I just need to go. I need to go to know that I went. Because if I see another 25-year-old influencer who makes nowhere near what I make right. going on the trip that I should be going on, I can't I take another you. summer of it. I have well, to go. I wish you wouldn't because I use you and Peter when my wife is – because my wife loves Europe. And I always use you and Peter as my excuse. Like, they don't go to Europe <laughs> and they're doing fine. Like, so now if you guys well, we're go going. to Europe, I'm going to have to go to Europe. We're going. Yeah. Well, I, I, I noticed that it quite – like John and Sarah don't go to Europe. Josh does what goes to Europe. I never see them European Josh traveling. went to Europe with his um, – Husband, but then they got to now they're divorced. no. I'm talking Josh Wolf. Oh, Josh yeah. Wolf. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Well, because I think it it is one of those things with our business. It is kind of a little bit of longer commitment. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. so I said, I'd like to go between two and three week trip. That's yeah. you know. Wow. Well, well, we'll, we'll see what happens. Again, I'm putting it out there, people. You want me to come to your place? You want to meet me? Yeah. Make it make it happen for I me. I like that. Um. Oh, by the way, then Jen Shaw, going back to Jen Shaw, then she had a real fun dinner in New York after for 20 people. Yeah, so I, I often wonder when they get these six and a half year sentences and they start having fun dinners and stuff, are, is there a lawyer telling them like, you're not actually going to serve any of this time? Like, we're going to... No, she is because it's federal. Oh, it is. Okay. So like, she'll actually have to serve She time. really will have to serve like at least like six. Six years. Yes, because you don't get as much shaved off when it's federal. Wow. That's a long time. It's really long. Yeah. It's really long. And, you know, at her age. And who is she blaming? Is she blaming the husband? I feel no, like. No, but the husband definitely is in on yeah. it. Yeah. The husband was helping with all. The husband was a former attorney. Right. Who then became a coach. And he knew. And the thing is, is that this business that they did, this scam business. Yeah. It wasn't like they were doing it for a while and then they seeped into scamming. They, it started out as a scam 10 years ago. Right. It was only a scam. It w and right. it was like they'd call old people and there's conversations where they'd be like, hey, can we get um, – hi, I'm trying I, – I got the 70-year-old to put 4500 on one card and 1200 on the next. Yeah. Um, but I think that's it. And then, there, and then she'd be like, no, if you um, – you, if you, you can charge her one more round but then put it through this company. Yeah. They had like all these other companies to scam these people numerous times. It's, yeah. It was horrible. It was horrible. She's an awful person. And I'm so proud to say that from the moment I saw her on the show three or four years ago, I was like, this is the worst housewife. She's full of shit. She's phony. I don't like her. I think she's full of shit. And she was. Now, do you feel these people would, because I feel like a lot of these housewives have have now have criminal records. There's been yeah. quite a few of yes, them. Yes, yeah. And do you think they would have been caught had they not chosen to be a housewife? Like, I feel like that puts a spotlight on them and they, people start checking their background and stuff. 
where th- th- if they just remained regular people scamming old people, they probably could have continued on doing that for quite some time without. Well, I mean, the thing is, uh, is DAs and they do like. They're, they like a limelight story. Right. That's why sometimes when you can't get someone to prosecute your story, your your crime, when you try. They're yeah. like, sorry, we're not going to pursue that. So they get a jam shot. That is exciting. Like, oh, it's uh, yeah. more fun. To- it's more fun. Yeah. And also, I think, yes, that she may have been caught, but maybe um, because there was no sensationalism, maybe it would have been... Right, an easier blow or cry, I don't know. This really did add to all of it, mm-hmm. and they are using her definitely as an example because there's a lot of telemarketing scams, and they're hoping that like, hey, if you're doing this, you better yeah. fucking get out now because you will do some real hard time for calling people and charging them for stuff that that. Have isn't you ever real. been scammed or anyone in your family? Like, you, were your parents scammed when they were older? No, but they would get emails and stuff, and yeah. then, you know, like, I knew what it was. I feel like everything's a scam. Yeah. So I immediately go into it, like, scam, scam, scam. No, you should be very careful. I paid for my mother and father to get into New York City from Long Island. Yeah. I was in New York a few weeks ago for Christmas. Yeah. And I had my mom, I put my mom and dad in Uber to come into New York City from Long Island. I sent the Uber to their house. Okay. And they were, everything's a scam to my parents, everything. They are not going to get caught by a Jen Cha. Okay, they good. Were like, they would not trust this Uber. So they didn't get in the car? They would not get in. I told my mom, he's out front because he was calling me. Yeah. And I said, is there a car out front idling with the headlights on? My mother goes, yes, but I don't know if this is the one. I'm like, that's the one. <coughs> get in the back. <laughs> and they did. They finally got in. And okay. they finally got in. And then yeah. I guess he was asking questions, you know, just like an Uber driver does. And my mom's texting me. He's asking a lot of questions. I don't know if this is the guy. I'm like, do you think a stranger picked up two 83-year-old people to, to murder them? <laughs> it, I mean, it, it was – and then they wouldn't – to get back, they didn't want to get in there to want to go back. Can't we just take a regular car? I don't like this Uber one bit. Wow. Because the guy was like – the guy was like, can you stay – and New York City's weird. If you yeah. go, if you Uber into New York City from Long Island, you can't pick up in New York City. They make a so my mother's like the guy wants to go go off app and just take cash for a ride back. I said so do it. We'll give him a hundred dollars. I'll drive you back. Yeah. My mother's like I want to stay on app. I was like well, you didn't even know what the app was ten minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. So yeah, they're not gonna get Jen shot. I don't. Think. I remember my dad would joke about his mother. Not understand, being like, what is this thing, a credit card? That's how long ago it was. Oh, my but God. But she was like, no. And he's like, no, Mom, like, no, yeah. I can charge it on the credit card. You know, and she was like, you know, glory be to God, I'm not using a piece of plastic. Oh, that's not a real, <laughs> that's not real money. So it's like, yeah, yeah it's hard for and people to adjust. That's called a master charge. Put yeah. A master charge. Oh, wow. Okay. So um, now this was a sad story. This guy had a heart attack. But did you hear about yes. it? Yes. It's so, such a strange story. Well, so this couple, they have two little kids, a two-year-old and five-month-old. And he works for the new, one of the t- He uh, was news, a news reporter. News. They went to a steak restaurant down the street from kind of like whatever, like a Soho house that has like a, a club. I think yeah. it was like called a Yale club or something. And, but you have a hotel room. And then when the guy had a heart attack and she was getting in the ambulance, she's like, can you please check on my children? You can check on my children. And they're like, what is, what is she talking about? Anyway, they had left their two kids in the alone room. in the hotel room while they went down the street to have a fun steak dinner. Yeah, it's so strange. I got to tell you, my wife and I think about it all the time. Leaving like, your kid unattended? Yes, yes. When the baby goes to sleep, we're like, oh, she's asleep. You know, we're like, it, the bar's down the hallway in a hotel, you know what I mean? But then that one story gets us every time Madeline McCann Mad- or whatever, yeah. yeah. We're like, yeah, but that's what they did with Madeline McCann. You know, I was like, we could just go to the wine bar and we could see the window. So we never do. But I understand how well, you Well, my, my, I have a friend and her, I've told the story before, but her, her older child was doing something else and the second one was like one and the husband was watching him. And this is like an educated, smart, cute couple like these people. Yeah. And she came home from the day and she saw like some burrito wrappers and she was like, oh, you went, you took the baby to, you guys went to get burritos? And he's like, no, she was sleeping. So I just went down the street and got a burrito. Oh. And she told us and we were like, you know, I'm like, look, obviously you got to forgive him, you know, yeah. but like 
Sometimes people just need to be told, like, what if there was a fire? What if there yeah. was an earthquake? What if you got in a car accident driving down the street? Yeah. Then you, then your kids get taken away. Mm -hmm. Like, and sometimes you have people. And I think what one person said is, I think people are becoming so dependent on, but I've got a monitor or I've got right. a ring camera yeah, that yeah. I can look on my phone. I can see the ring camera. Uh -huh. Like, who knows? Maybe they brought a a remote camera and they could look on their phone at oh, the hotel room, right. and that might have made them feel yeah. like. But then again, what if you look at your phone and you see a guy grabbing the child? Like, what? You still can't save the I, child. I, how could you possibly sit and have like a nice meal not with the two? And they're young kids, right? I mean, is, is this a recent five, picture? Two years old and five months. Oh, that's way too young to leave them alone. That's very strange. No, it's very bad. And I'm like, look, I'm sorry, 35 year olds that like are craving yeah. for an uninterrupted wine steak dinner. I remember yeah. savoring those few and far moments in between. Yeah. But. Too fucking bad. Uh -huh. You can't do it. If you don't have the help set up, you can't go. I agree with Sussalicious76's comment. Why what is, is she... everyone dying? <laughs> <laughs> Somebody figured they had to write that. Why? Why are people dying? I yeah. don't know. That is um, the... Did you know David uh, Miscavige is nowhere to be found? Again? Oh, now him with the <clears throat> Well, they're just trying to serve him. All these abuse allegations of what people that have believe, they believe they've suffered at the hands of Scientology okay. abuse, and they can't find. Have it. you seen the new commercials where it's yes. him actually speaking, and they yes. make it look like it's the greatest thing ever? It does look pretty great. I know. I got to tell you, I watched commercial. I'm like, sign me up. They're on. They're on like jet skis and having a great time. Yeah. And he makes it sound like I need to try. I know you've heard a lot about us. Talk to me. Yeah. You know, you want to hear the real story? I know. And they're uh, like on uh, huge primetime shows. They're so. on like during the NFL, like yeah. the biggest audience in the world. They put this commercial on. I would, yeah. Let me know if there's a new person or if they ever are going to change the MO of it to continue. Yeah. Like, like, will it, if they have new people now, is it not the same trajectory right. of keeping the people and getting their money because that has now all been exposed. You keep buying these books and you have to keep retaking these yeah. courses and then you get to the top and it's, hi, we were created by aliens. Like, are they killing that story now? And like just making it more about like self-realization and just like yeah. <clears throat> being the best person you can be. Like, yeah, they should kill the alien story. Yeah. <laughs> they really should. And just say you might, there's an outside chance you might get the Tom Cruise coconut cake at Christmas. Like yeah. if, you, if you get high up enough. Is that a thing? Oh, you didn't know about that? Is that his favorite? Tom Cruise sends everyone in his- From Dones. He sends- There's I, a famous coconut cake that like Christmas Jenner and everyone loves. It's okay. D-O-A-N-S it in be. L.A. Well, anyway, if you get the Tom Cruise coconut cake, okay. you're A-list. All right. So to get the Tom Cruise coconut cake at Christmas is something you know you've made in Hollywood. All right. Yeah. You, you haven't gotten it, He still has yet to see Suri. Oh. They doesn't... still, like, never see each other. Well, if, yeah. Isn't that and a... there's still always that rumor that it's not his biological yeah. kid. It's Chris Klein. Yeah. That actor. Yeah. But he does. she does look like Tom Cruise. She could be. Yeah. She could be. Um, Brittany, crazy as ever. I don't know if you've ever. Uh, Crazier than ever. Sure. The, 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 you know what popped up recently? The Yesterday, I think. Yeah. The, the, the wedding dress again. It keeps popping up. Her in the wedding. This well, is the day no, I no, married she, myself. No, this is, yeah, this is yeah. it. This is different photo. And I did it because it's, no, it's the same photo practically. It's the same photo. Um, people, conspiracy theories is that. Now, the latest one I heard from this girl is the Madonna, Madonna and Drew and Paris. Oh. They, they, Drew, that Drew all Barrymore? went, yeah, that all yeah. went to the wedding. They actually are somehow like protecting her because she's not really free. This is what I've been saying. How come I'm not included in this? And Chris Frangiola. Yeah. But you didn't go to the wedding. I didn't, wasn't invited. So, again, you know, and, and people were like, was she ever at Nobu? Like that one time they went to Nobu yeah. and someone said that she picked up their baby. Like, is she really going out? The Sam stuff is weird. So, you know, Sam from, is. It, he's just a kid that, I, from my understanding, he grew up here. I mean, he came from Sam Iran. Yeah, yeah, he came from Iran as a child. But he, and I think he struggled in school as far as like, Right. Not fitting in, being an immigrant, he was not hot like this. He was, and and so like 
he kind of not popular, and now you know he gets with Britney, right? And there's something obviously weird about that. And who oh, knows? Well, I've already gone obviously. down the road of like, did they even really get married? I don't know. I but, don't know. And now she's having a beef with the sister again. That was all public on. She did that Instagram. and then take it down. And that yeah. was all about, I guess, because the sister and, and Dr. Drew are on this show called Special Forces, where they take oh, all these yeah, reality yeah. stars and they, you basically are like a Navy SEAL. Yeah. And, um, Oh, and Jamie I Lynn Spears is on that show? Yes. I've not seen the first episode, but I don't know if maybe she made some reference of being, it's hard to be Britney Spears' sister because then Britney writes her whole long thing, oh, it's so hard being my sister, and then she goes into her rant She was talking about, a lot about back pain or something. She has, yeah, she has a back pain that her leg is, is numb, but then she's spinning around and dancing yeah. with her, like, not good dancing. And then she says... Um, you know, I, it brings up the day that she walked in and all of her friends were getting pedicures and enjoying champagne. And that day she had to perform at Ho Planet Hollywood and she couldn't get the spa and she couldn't get her cup of coffee. Yeah. This is a, a like an ongoing theme about the coffee and the spa. Yeah. So I then wrote and I said, do I have it here? Oh, I don't have oh, it. Oh, it was front. pretty great. But I, I wrote it. and I said, Brittany. Like, let's go to the Four Seasons in Westlake. It's a beautiful spa. There's a really cute coffee place that we're going to get coffee. We're going to go to the spa. I'm coming yeah. to get you. And then other people are like, if you really knew her, wouldn't you have your number? I'm like, who the fuck? Why are people so dumb? I, I love having to explain jokes to Ugh. people. Um, yeah, it is. it is. Uh, but now that thing you wrote, yeah. is that's very funny. But I believe if she really was, there is somebody in her life who should be able to do that. You know what I mean? If she really was free. Right. Somebody should be reading these Instagrams and going, listen, Brittany, let's go out for the day. Think It seems like you're having a moment or, or an episode She doesn't or have any friends. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. This I'm is like, strange. I'm like that no one has seen her like walking around Target in Westlake. No one has seen her on right. a walk. Yeah. Like, no, there's no way. with and, 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 Yeah. Yeah. So any, any of that, like there's got to be an agent – a man and somebody in her life who can go, let's go get coffee and tell me what the but issue is. But I do is. think people are getting tired of it as a subject because, I mean, she's still at 41 million people, but, like, it never really goes up. Well, nobody It goes take, down. She's not gaining to, any yeah, new people. Yeah, and she's probably yeah. losing some, but, okay, good luck to you. I'm ready to take you. Chris D'Elia, after the YouTube thing, um, the YouTube show they that took I talked away about. one show at the improv. At the LA improv. Yeah, Just said deal. it was a scheduling thing. Yeah. He did go to sex rehab. He was there between November and December, right? Knowing that this was coming out, I don't think it made much of a splash at all. No, because everything that the YouTube documentary talks about, yeah, you, you watched it, yeah, I yeah. watched it. Um, the guy says the guy, the comedian who made it, says it's all after he supposedly came out of rehab. All of this stuff. No, happened. but then he just went again. Oh, it's a new. He the now latest. just said he went again. Oh. Um, so he did, was, did he reference the? He, has he referenced this documentary? Yet? No, he won't a lot reference of people, it. Yeah, but but it's clear based on the on this that even though they're consensual, of course, you know he's denying that he was trying to have a cult or whatever. He's not denying; he's just not addressing it. It's clear that he was cheating on his wife right. and mother of his child right. after all the stuff was exposed two years ago. Right. He continued to have relationships outside of his marriage. Uh -huh. That I. So because of that, he went to sex rehab. Again. Again. Yeah. And then, but he still gets to keep his shows, except the LA Improv was but like, we the LA can Improv, lose one no, Who cares about that? That's a little show that everybody seats. does. Yeah. yeah. Like, we'll just get rid of that uh, one. But then he has a tour, big tour you yeah. know, of theaters and stuff that's selling well, and yeah. he's going to be out and on And people it. will still go, and people don't care that like him. I just don't understand wh why, though. Like, he's he's a fine comedian. He's Okay. But you could just say, all right, I'm going to move on to another comedian. There's plenty of good ones out there. I don't understand why he has such a giant following. It's not like he was that big a star, you know I mean? I don't know. Yeah. It's just so weird to me that he has such Maybe a big Maybe it's following. just like certain guys that are his fans don't want to lose another to being a perv. I wish and I could just like, blame dumb to... guys, but there <laughs> like... are a lot of dumb girls out there, too. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. I mean, you look at the comments underneath his Instagram, it's all women. You are the greatest. I love you. Or so... maybe girls that have dated cheating pervs want to believe that it's worth it if they're funny and they can go to rehab multiple times and make and redeem themselves. And right. I don't want to give up 
on this type of creep that yeah. might be in my life. It's it's fascinating to me. Uh, yeah, Th that documentary was very good. It was very good. Yeah, but you I know, I spoke to the guy. I spoke to him too, and he and was he, like, I was like, you know, I, you know, but he was like, I don't want to do any interviews. I'm like, okay, that's fine. But I mean, I'm sorry. Like I talked about it. I people don't really care. People don't no. really care about Chris D'Elia, and they don't really care that he was a creep. I, I, people don't care because I don't think he's that big a star in our he, world. He is because we're comedians, but, but also his stuff. He can still be a star. Right. You, he can have his own podcast and he can have his private theaters. He could, he literally could rent out the theater and the theater doesn't like, you yeah. could rent out your own thing. It's not even like he has to be booked by improv. Right. So he can continue on, you know. But some of the stuff that the, he's accused of is criminal behavior. Yeah. Whether he's, but I, I mean, I never went to a court of law right. and was convicted. Yeah. So, I mean, if you get to the point where you're just going to start, canceling all scumbags i mean the comedy community is going to be gone yeah. you know what i mean yeah but if it's criminal behavior then fuck this guy i i think expose it if you want to still buy a ticket yeah. go and if you don't you don't right. and right. it you are what you are i i i didn't realize he has a brother that he does a podcast with and they look kind of alike no i was like how did they I, when i first thought i go how did they find another how did he find another greasy yeah, looking they, dude and then there's some person that oh that's his brother i go oh yeah, okay well they both have the same like hair yeah like yeah the same Ugh, hair i can't grease. Okay, let's talk about everything that's come out. The Harry book comes out today, Tuesday. And 60 But minutes. it came out somehow. People in Spain got it. And I'm going to read to you every... There was about 50 articles page six wrote. And okay. these are just the headlines. And he did do the 60 Minutes interview last night. He did Anderson the 60 Minutes. Cooper. So basically... the Okay. Um, so one of the things I'll say, and then I'm going to read them, is Harry... Um, said that he was always competitive with William. He's really the meanest to William in all of this. And he said when they got to the same school, he's like, can we hang out now? And he said, no, don't act like you don't William know me. William said to him. Yeah, act yeah. like you don't know me. Yeah. I remember my brother said that to his brother too. Right. And um, I guess a lot of people do that in high school. Now they're two princes, so I think people know they know each other. Right. And, and Harry even said, you know, now I see... Lilibet wants to hang out with Archie, and Archie's like, get away, little pest. Yeah. And he goes, so I guess I understand it now. Oh, you do? Now that you wrote the book about what an awful brother you had, you dumb right. idiot? He said, you know, one time I looked at my brother, and I, and he goes, and his balding much worse than, much more advanced than mine. Yeah. Guess what, Harry? You are going to be completely bald in about five years. Yeah. And I think at that point, William might be cuter than you. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So That's I a... I don't like I, it. I disagree with that one completely. Okay. But... Well, whatever. Yeah. Um, here are the things. He said, William and Kate used to watch Suits. They were big fans. But they no, were very they, they were not. very jealous that he was marrying a woman that had such a great career. However, in the Netflix doc, he said when someone brought up her to him to possibly date. He had no idea who she was. Yeah. So she had this great career that his brother-in-law was jealous of, yet Harry had no idea who Meghan was. I don't believe they that lie for a one lot. second they, they lie they a lot. They're both suit. liars. Let's Honey, turn on USA Network. Yeah. <laughs> no, no Let's way. watch Todd Chrisley, yeah. and then let's watch Suits. <laughs> no way. Like, are you kidding me? Yeah. Um, Meghan Markle was put in her place for making a comment about Kate's baby brain. This is the story that goes from... She apparently Kate said Charlotte's dress is too long. She's not in, it comfortable as in the flower girl dress is too long. Yeah. And Megan said, "Okay, that's fine. You can shorten it. Just go get a tailor." There was some miscommunication, and oh, then yeah, yeah. Kate, and then when Kate questioned it, this was at it, their wedding. Yeah. Right? Then Megan said it must have been Kate's baby brain, meaning she just had a baby, and sometimes you know your hormones change. Oh. And Kate was like, "We're not close enough for you to talk about my baby brain." So that was one fight. Prince Harry says... It is Kate's birthday today, by the way. I know. Happy birthday. Years old, yeah. Prince Harry says it was William and Kate who told him to wear the Nazi costume for Halloween. They thought it would be a fun idea. Well, yes and no. They didn't tell him to wear it. They, I have read this part, this mm -hmm. excerpt. They said it would be funnier than... He was comparing himself to another person who was going to be at the party and what he was wearing. Okay. And they asked what would be... And they said, yeah, it would be funnier. The Nazi costume would be funnier than whatever he's wearing. 
So it didn't, they didn't say, wear a Nazi costume. So there is kind of But a, I also just think the worst thing that you did, yeah. you now can blame on your older brother. Right. That your brother bullied you into it or gave, yeah. gave you the idea. Then William and Harry got in a physical fight one day when he was said he was living in squalor. He was living poor in a cold little cottage, William. I mean, Harry. And William got mad at him and pushed him down, and he fell and broke a dog bowl on his back. He cut his back. And yeah. he said, you know, this is how abusers abuse, and I'm a victim. He also says that when he was fighting the Afghan war, he killed 25 people that were just chess pieces to him. Oh, so your brother, you were a, a victim of physical abuse by yeah. your royal brother when you yeah. broke a dog bowl, but you also were this, you know, killer. So it sounds I, to me like at this point, your your team William and Kate. I don't know. Okay. I'm just okay. Right. So Harry's yeah. Harry's ex girlfriend Chelsea would wear mini skirts and drink tequila and make and it made Harry happy, but the royals didn't like that. But he liked it. <laughs> oh, I bet. Who that makes everybody happy. Mini skirts and tequila. Yeah. Oh, he also uh, had lost his virginity <laughs> with some woman, older woman, when he was twenty-one. And people think it might be this Real Housewives of DC, which was a one-season wonder, because she, in her book, said that she had a romp with Harry. Oh. Okay. Wow. Um, he tried cocaine, and Good it made him her. feel different. No shit. Yeah. Prince Hill William was freaked that Meghan tried to hug him. Okay. Prince Harry was given the chance to verbally commit to King Charles' coronation in May, but he won't commit because anything could happen. Camilla took his room and made it her dressing room. I mean, that's a bitchy stepmom move, but uh, who there, needs, you need a big uh, closet. Apparently, Camilla gets, gets torn apart in this book quite a bit. I've heard. Right. He believed his mom faked her death to escape the press. He didn't believe she was really dead well, when he, he was, was 12. Kid. Yeah, yeah, sad. Meghan Markle is going to release her own bombshell book. Can't wait. King Charles said he didn't have enough money to financially support them. Meghan Markle asked to borrow Kate's tube of lips gloss once. It's a Clarence brand. We found it. And um, yeah. And I guess Kate didn't want her to borrow it. I don't For like when I... I'll I'll lend a chapstick or yeah. something to my wife or even anybody. I don't know yeah. germ folk. Yeah, I, I don't I don't like when they fuck with the, you know. Don't leave it at the level I gave it to you. Oh, okay. Don't well, move this, it up or down. This is a gloss where you squirt it out. I know that one. Okay. I'm familiar with that. But okay. I'm saying that. All right. Just if there's ever a book written about me, just know you can borrow my chapstick, but don't. Okay. Move it any higher or lower. Um, Prince Harry claims that William felt guilt. I don't know if this, I don't understand. And didn't speak up about, oh, didn't speak up about the affair to their dad about Camilla. Like oh, they didn't okay. like that he was having the affair. <clears throat> Charles said his work was done after the birth of a second child, meaning Harry. So that was hurtful. Prince Harry reveals that his penis was frostbitten at Kate Middleton's 2011 wedding. I don't know how that's her fault, but it was frostbitten. How did that happen? We don't know. I mean, I, if I read, if I clickbaited yeah. every single article, Probably Prince from fucking that ice queen, Meghan Markle, now. <laughs> Prince William's thinny hair is alarming and more advanced than his own. Oh, I said that. William was jealous of Harry's idea for the Invictus Games. It's very competitive their whole life. Also, Harry said, Africa's my thing. Don't try to jump on that. Oh. Okay. So, like, fighting over what, like, charity yeah. is sexier. Um <clears throat> He'd, um, he didn't receive a hug from his dad following the death of his mom. That's rude. Um, but maybe that's because he had, like, formal wear on and sor swords yeah. and stuff. I don't know. Regrets watching Megan's sex scenes in suits. Okay. Um, oh. But how did your brother and, and Kate they like it since it. they are yeah. such big fans? He – okay, so um, – Oh, the, okay, let's see. Harry said he grew up amid public speculation that his true father was Diana's former lover, Major James Hewitt. That's the cute guy. Yeah. And even King Charles made jokes about it. Here's the thing. Why, what would it take, people, to follow Harry around and get a cup or something that he drinks out of and I was just in, having this conversation in with Santa yeah. Barbara. Yeah. And then find get someone the who works real quick. someone who works in the royal family yeah. gets something from King Charles. Right. Oh, they've done it. And I'm put sure. it together and find out and then be like, you know what? You're not the son. Yeah. So goodbye, motherfucker. Like, or I think somebody or, has done it, and it's it, it, and he's Prince Charles's kid, and the, the fun's over. You know. All right. The rumor and the speculation is the fun part, because I mean, obviously, it's easy to get out of the one of there. You just could. So, so and people would. say, why don't you just denounce being 
the prince anymore. And he's like, ah, I don't want to. Prince William uh, did not want Camilla to marry. Well, nobody wants a stepmother. Sorry, I'm one too. Harry says that his beloved brother William is his arch nemesis. And the latest in, uh, Netflix show was inspired by Nelson Mandela. But he th and that's what William thinks. But William thinks that they obviously have ulterior motives to all of this. Um, I got to tell you, at this point, I'm not hearing any bombshells. That stuff I've all there is no bombshells before. There's no yeah. bombshells. Like the two brothers fight, big deal. I mean, isn't that isn't that the every brother fights? Yeah, with their brothers. I interviewed the spare in my home. Is what? Brandon the spare? He's the spare. Oh, Brandon is the yeah. spare. Okay, very. The similarities are uncanny. Yeah. And Drake is William. He's Harry. Oh, is that They're right? They're three years apart. Yeah. Everything about it. Clearly, I'm Diana. And um, I I interviewed him, and we'll put, I'll do the video. Yeah. And I said, you know, what is it like? What is little brother syndrome? Like, let's explore it. How bad is it? Because I have said to, to Brandon, there was right. a time where he would get frustrated. And I said, listen, you were born into an abusive relationship. Mm hmm but it's going to end soon. He's going to go to college. Right. And I understand it's hard. He's always taller. He's always bigger. It yeah. sucks. He's always, he's going to be smarter, but it's eventually going to even out. And I interviewed Brandon today and he says, yes, he is bigger. He is stronger. He's in college and he always, mostly always beats me at things. Yeah. But he said, but eventually it'll even out. And he doesn't understand why these two boys are complaining he wow. said, because their lives are set for them. I'm like, See? well, so is yours. But, yeah. um, but <laughs> you're not going to be, yeah. But that's, that's, is this before the haircut? This is just after the haircut. This oh, was this so morning. New, new lease on life. Yeah. Right? And yeah. so I'm like, we're going to get you a glow up. We're going to yeah. like, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I mean, I think it's hard to be, I think sisters have their own dynamic and I think brothers have, and, a, and, Peter was the younger of the two brothers, and one time at a, like a very big event, it was like they got in a physical fight. Yeah. And I think it was like finally, I heard about the story after I married him. I thought it was a pretty bad story, and I felt bad for my mother in law. But it was like, I think it was like Peter was like, I'm finally like big enough, and I like fucking hate you because oh. for my whole life, not, you know what I mean? Yeah, you know yeah, yeah, I, mean? I, I just it. think guys have that moment where yeah. physically, this old, and then do on top of it that he's going to be king. Yeah. Do you think that happens more with two boys? Because I'm from four, there's four of us. Yes, I think. And we don't have any of that. I think it's, I think every family is different. Yeah. But I do think a two brother close in right. age. Yeah. And both having similar interests and physicality. And it can be, it can be, but it also can be great. And then also it's like, this is my best friend and you're going to be my best man and all that kind of stuff. But. The only thing mean that my brothers would do to me yeah. is uh, I used to like to watch the Oscars and stuff when I was a kid. Yeah. And my brothers thought that was a little, you know, they didn't think that was great. And any and when they saw the most flamboyant dancer in one of the musical numbers on the Oscars, they would go, "There's Chris." <laughs> <laughs> And, and look like, at you. Yeah, yeah. They would say, look, there's you. And, it, you know, whatever. Whoever was the most flamboyantly gay dancer in the background. And you and you were me. like, if only yeah. I could yeah, dance at the I Oscars. <laughs> <laughs> that was about as mean as they got. <laughs> yeah. And today that wouldn't be mean at all. No, it would, that, yeah, that, right. If that was the case, yeah. little Chris would have 7 million followers yeah, exactly. and he'd be dancing around and the parents would be exploiting <laughs> and him. And my brothers would be and arrested. He, and he would have rainbow shirts <laughs> yeah. on and uh -huh. it would be, Big different, different oh times. my God, little boy Chris. Are you guys following little boy Chris? Yeah. Little he watches, boy Chris He is, watches all the award shows. <laughs> is the cutest thing mm -hmm. and his family is so wonderful and embracing yeah. that everybody can just be where they want to be. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, well, good. I'm glad they, you know, didn't tell you they couldn't watch the Oscars. Maybe, yeah. And um, so you have an inside to Netflix. What okay. it ha is happening after this? The book is out. The show is done. Do they? Do we get a Kardashians reality type of show? Do we get a Ti and Tiny? Except it's H and M. What is it? I, I don't know. I mean, I have. I, I have. A, I don't. They, it does well. It did well. I know, but what well. now? Because they're not funny. Yeah, and they're not. That interesting, once you've spilled all the beans. Yeah. Oh, and the other thing he just said in the interview, the ITV or whatever that one is, he sa they said, what about the racism within the family? And he's like, I never said my family was racist. And they're like, yeah. 
But you said um, that Megan, qu- that someone questioned um, Archie's and skin tone. Place of- and he's like, Megan, Megan never said that. I'm like, what is, what are you trying, like, right. Uh, we, that was said, but I didn't say it was racist. Right. What are you saying? You're saying that you went on an interview with Oprah and you said that they questioned your son's skin tone of when he would come out, what right. skin tone he would be. And you didn't think by saying that that the world would interpret that well, your family had racism. Like, the, the play, he's like playing these two sides. Like, And then, oh, I very much love my brother. I really much, I really much. I'm like, where did it come where you're like, we have to sit, tell everything. We have to spill it all. We got to make all the money we can make. Yeah. Because this time with my family is done and I'm never going to see a dollar from them. That's what I think. And they're like, the one thing we have is our juicy story. So we've got to tell it. We got to tell so it on the Netflix. It. We got to tell it in the book. We got to tell it on the Spotify right. podcast. But once it's been told, uh huh. And they're never fucking with you again. Right. You can't say, Hey, Juicy Scoopers, let me tell you about my weekend with Prince William. Yeah. We rented a boat. Kate and Charlotte were such little fucking bitches. Like, what? you're not going to have those stories. They need to get the whole family, sit them all down, like a, like a Housewives reunion. Yeah. And just have, like, um, uh, Jerry Springer hosted <laughs> and just, have to, like, punch each other out and stuff. Like, And in all of this, yeah. why is Harry not saying... And really, honestly, I was so creeped out by my Uncle Andrew that I was like, let's get the fuck out of here. He doesn't even mention it. Yeah. I'm like, you don't, I would, if you want to redeem yourself, say that is what initially turned us off. And in doing that is what made us realize all the cover ups that have happened. And that's why we're exposing it all because we're grossed out by it. Yeah. Then I'd be like, okay, I'm back, Team Harry and Megan. Yeah. But all of it is so. I'm a victim, boo-hoo, they're jealous of me. Are you going to read the book? I feel like now I've read the book, just from your little cheat sheet here. I feel like I, that's all I need to know. The only thing is I might read it because I think I might find other funny things that Page Six hasn't that I could rip on yeah. for the show. Right, right. So I might just read it and just try to get in my son Brandon's spare head. I just hope that he never feels like this dick. Yeah. I think he'll be fine. Oh, Oh, Let's end this, on this was so. I have to say, Alec I, Baldwin, so embarrassed, went on his Instagram to say it was Elaria's birthday, and she's just so close. She's only a couple grand away from one million followers. So on please Instagram. go on Instagram and follow my wife, Elaria. Thoughts? This is a grown man. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's just. I have to say, I, I've been burned by Alec Baldwin. I actually really used to like him. He's from Long Island. He's kind of like funny. I, he's got brothers like I do. I, he's, I've always found him funny. I liked him on like comedians in cars. Howard Stern. He's always good. He did great movies yeah, like twenty like years he was ago. In good movies and and but God, I think I have to say he's insane. Yeah. Which I'm I'm shocked by. I thought he was a pretty normal, down to earth guy, but he's not. Um. I don't know how this is going to work out because I haven't worked on it. But Kate Casey, our friend, has requested that we improvise you as Alec and me as Ilaria and me asking you to do this. Oh, How this came about right, right. Okay. at home. Well, I think Alec and I both have the same bags under our eyes. So I got that going for me. Um, yeah. Um, he, a, he has like a deep voice. Right? Yeah. Okay. Um, sounds like- darling. Um, you know, it's my birthday and, um, how do you say celebrate? And I would really, I can't believe it, but I don't know if you noticed, but I am so close to a million followers and I, you know, with the podcast, I have a couple podcasts and I'm trying so hard and, you know, I gave, you know, the kids and the Balduinos and everything. If I, I just want to get to a million followers and baby, it's so easy for you because you're so popular. You're so famous. You're so fabulous. If you could just go on your Instagram because you have more followers than I do. Does, does he have more followers? Let's just see how many he has. Yes, he does. Yeah. What does he have? He's got 3.1. Oh, something. because you have more followers as you should, my darling, because you are a true actor. You're a true entertainer. I mean, I am just, I am just famous by default. I am just famous because I am your wife. I'm a mother and, you know, and press is always so mean to me, you know, um, so can you go on your Instagram and ask your people just all they have to do is quick follow and then for my birthday. 
I will, yes, honey, I will do that because you're the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. You're the most beautiful Oh, my woman. God, you're so sweet. Yes, and I love you and all the children. You know what I love about you, Alec? What? Is that you want to do everything with me. Yes, of We course. never want to be apart. No. Every time you're like, I want to be part of the party. Yeah. I want to be with you. And that's what I love about you because we're so compatible and, you know, with all the Balduinos and all the babies, I just, that's what I so, yes. So, okay, here's your phone. The reason why I like to be with you so much is because the last time I left you, I went to New Mexico to shoot a movie and it didn't end well. So I would much rather be All with the more you. reason why I need to get to the million followers. Yes, because if right. I have a million followers, I can help other people. Oh, yes, yes, Become yes. their true authentic self and support right. women. Well, let's do it. Let's get you a million followers. I'm going to go on Instagram from okay. the back of my car and beg. To get you a million followers. Okay. So now do it. Let's just hear you beg. Just oh. I don't even know if you saw it, but just yeah, do it. Yeah, I did. I watched okay, it Okay, let's go. Time. As you know, it's my wife, Alaria's birthday. And for that, I would like you to follow Alaria, uh, the most beautiful woman I've ever met. She's uh, the light of my life. And she's so close to a million. So for her birthday, if you could get her a million followers... And uh, that would be great for me, for Alec. Oh, my God, baby. That was so sweet. Thank you. That was so sweet. <laughs> I can't believe it. Oh, my God, baby. I just checked my, I just checked my phone. I am at 1,012,000. Oh, wow. Yes. You're welcome. That's the Baldwin. That is why we are a team. The magic of that's the Baldwin. That's why we are a team. That's why you never, you know, that's why, how do you say you support me? And yes. we are just happy and we are a family and, you know, our love transcends all cultures, all languages. Cucumbers are stupid. I don't, we don't. I, I, I don't even know what a cucumber yes. is. A zucchini. I no, go by, cucumber. No, they're zucchini now. <laughs> yes, but they used to be cucumbers, but not. I know. That's why it's so confusing yeah, because, you right. know, when you, when you grow up. In two different households, mm -hmm. one for 20 years in Boston, and then you spend a summer in Spain. Yeah. It's just like very, very confusing. Cucumbers become, yeah, there's yeah, a lot it's of Yeah, very, very confusing. Vegetables. But people are just so jealous. Mm -hmm. Excellent job. Thank Excellent you. Thank job. You. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, it was very embarrassing. It's, uh, it was just, I don't know. I don't know. But it was I have to say, I have done this for myself. When I've gotten really close to like a milestone. That's different. I've been like, come on, you guys. That's different. Yeah. yeah. Peter's not doing it. Yeah, it's different. I mean, we all do that. We all have to do this stuff. But yeah. yeah. Did I ever tell you my prediction of Pete Davidson? No. I think I think it's done. It's over? I think. Like the love of. Oh, I think his, he, hit, he hit the God, pinnacle. I hope so. I agree. He hit the pinnacle. I don't think there's. Anything interesting about him again? No. And I think he's not like an amazing actor. I don't think it's like he left. He really just needs to go back to SNL. And I said that before. Yeah. He should go back to SNL and just try to be funny. Right. And honestly, he shouldn't date anybody. Yeah. He should just try to be funny on his own without dating popular women like Emily and Kim. Yeah. And try to see if he can save this career. But I think... Well, he's got a big show coming out. What's the big show? It's about like kind of about his life. It, it's scripted, but it's about being Staten Island guy or whatever. I think it's on Apple. going to be on Apple TV. Yeah, yeah it's Staten similar Island. to the Sta King All of Staten Island. All right, well, you know what? Maybe, yeah, maybe people a, will like and it And like, I think Washington Post or whatever just said it's one of the most anticipated shows of the year. So who knows? That could be a, a resurgence. All but right. it's a good well, prediction. Of, I agree with you. Speaking of Kim, um, Kim and North have their TikTok. And Kim dressed as Kim. And North did this makeup. I'm sure she got the professional makeup artists that are with them all the time to, like, shape her nostrils and everything to make her Kanye. Oh, that's not a filter of some sort? People that's thought it was a makeup? filter, but I think it's makeup. Oh, wow. Anyway, um, then she did another one with an, with her little friend being Kim wearing, like, a Juicy Couture sweatshirt. And then she wore something of Kanye's from the same year. Anyway, Kim has removed the TikTok now. Yeah. And people thought, is this, like, a way of reintroducing Kanye and, like, you know, oh, this will be fun. The and then when stuff. Kanye starts coming out and doing stuff yeah. again, people will forget the stuff. Right. I don't know. I th I was freaked out by her looking like Kanye. 
kind of freaked me out. I mean, but, it does look a lot like I Kanye. mean, she does look like yeah. him, but it's weird. Right. Um, and then to end on this story, your girl Cher, she did get engaged over the holidays. Oh, she did? Yes. Cher, 76, got engaged to Alexander A.E. Edwards. He's 36. And they are engaged. She has a ring, everything. And, of course, you know he was formerly with uh, Amber Rose. Amber, yeah. Well, good for him. 40 years, age difference. Yeah. And people are concerned. Concerned yeah. of what? I mean, if they concerned get married. I mean, if they get married. Yeah. I'm sure she I mean, one. I would think she would have a prenup, and I think she'd have some people lined up oh, that he it. can't take. But, I mean, listen, her mom did live another 20 years. Yeah. So, and she does look great. So, I don't know. Maybe they're really happy, and he's like, I mean, this is a huge, rich She woman. dated for a long time. She dated that weird comedian. Like, he's not famous at all, but... Like an older, weird comedian. Can you look that up? They dated for... He's a friend of Jen Kirkman's. That's how I remember Jen Kirkman went Ooh, backstage yes. and met her. Because she dated with this guy forever. And he's just like an open... Like almost like an open mic comedian. Well... An older guy. I mean, he's not 36. When she was in 36. her 40s, you know, she dated the Bagel Boy. Of course, yeah. And that Rob was like, Camaletti. Yeah, that was a big yeah. deal because like we really hadn't seen that. Yeah. And... Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. It's, I mean, I mean, you know, who doesn't like Cher? Good. She's 76. I mean, they Go might really have some life. fun together. Yeah. I don't know. Right. Like, what, and like, who knows? Why not, like, have the last 10 years of your life with, of like, course. a hot, cute yeah. guy? Go out and enjoy your life. Yeah, I'm, I'm all for it. I mean, she has one. grown kids and stuff. It's not like she has to, like, protect her estate. They for, just like, have the one kids. kid. Huh? Ron Zimmerman. Yeah, Ron Zimmerman. Yeah. Ron Zimmerman. That's, it. That's Ron Zimmerman. right. She I remember dated that. Him forever. No, oh. it was longer than that. It was they were like years together. Remember Ron's when she also had like a disease? She had the Epstein Barr. Yes, I guess she did not tired anymore. <laughs> yeah, well, th- now Celine Dion's got something. Oh, Stiff what, a, person. what about the roller? Uh, the the Rolling, Rolling Stone, Stone did not that's what I was count bring her up. as one of the most top famous 200, singers. Top two hundred best singers in the world. Celine Dion did not make it into the top two hundred. So people are protesting out front of the Rolling Stone headquarters. I get the kids in New York, so they're protesting out front that Celine Dion needs to be on this list. Which I mean. And then I'm like, all all these lists, like the people cute, you know, people's hottest guys, whatever. Yeah. I used to think it was like a table of people. Now I think so many people have been fired. It's just one person. And they might have just forgotten. I know. Or it could be intentional, but they literally may have forgotten. And then it went through and everyone was just like, yeah, that's good. That's good. Run it. I know. Of course. Like. Yeah. Rolling Stone magazine is just like, they're loving it because they're like, wow, people are talking about this list. It's like so, whatever the lists are like the best podcasts of whatever right. or the po- best pop culture podcast and like 99% of it, I'm not on it or then I'm like on it or someone's above me and how could this be? Who cares? <laughs> right. It like it's literally one person yeah. that their assignment is to write this article for $100. Yeah, like, exactly. But anyway, <laughs> she, uh, Celine Dion did not make it on the list. But she's not like a Rolling Stone wor- – She's a good singer, but I think they were going for like rock kind of singers. Aretha Franklin was number one. What which, was it? Wasn't Adele? If Adele was on there, Adele's then that, a, no, she's on there, but she's not. That's not fair. She's Fifteen or twenty or whatever she was. Mariah Carey's number two, I think. Okay. Yeah. Oh, excuse me. I, I didn't write the list, everybody, but I'm saying that. So. I love it, Chris. Yeah. Tell everybody what you're doing with your life. Where are you going to be next so they can actually see you in the flesh? Ton of dates coming up. I'm coming to Oklahoma City next. Fun. Brea, California. Uh, I got, I'm got. i going everywhere this year. Frangiola.fun has all my dates and is up to date. I'm going out with Fortune Feimster a little bit. Oh, right. You're Albuquerque at Texas, right? And, oh, wait, no. New Mexico? Uh, where are you going? No, Albuquerque's first and then Texas. And then El Paso? Midland and El Paso. And we're doing a couple Dallas, I think. And... Um, Austin, Vegas. Great. We're doing I'm doing Vegas with Fortune. Oh, fun! Oh, yeah. that's great. And then a bunch of my own dates: Chicago, coming back to Long Island, McGuire's, coming to New York City, coming to New, Jer- New Jersey. Should I keep going? Uh, Nashville, every city I'm going. Florida, Brea. That's the, great. Yeah, Brea. All right. Well, congrats. Side splitters in Tampa. <laughs> Tampa. What else? You know, West Palm, all the places that is this are you dying just hearing all this? 
Like, is this make, giving you like, oh, is he still doing this? No, I think it's, I, I mean, can if see you your enjoy is... it and you love it, it's great. Yeah. I, at this point, am just a little more selective in my time of getting on a, you know what? I was walking with Shannon in La Quinta. Right. And I saw a Sonoma Grill. And I said, isn't a Sonoma Grill like part of a hotel? And then I, I said, you know, I feel like I've been at the club where by myself at the Embassy Suites or uh -huh. wherever Sonoma Grill is attached yeah, to. Yeah. And I've been like, saying. oh, Sonoma Grill, that sounds fun. And I'm like, just trying to get like a Southwest salad. <laughs> yeah. And I, it's just I, yeah. like the ranch on the side and it's like. The waxy cheese slices. I'm sorry, Sonoma Grill. Maybe it's good. <laughs> yeah. But I just no, was I like, get it. I'm like the three days of just like being alone and doing the club. Uh, I mean, which that's why I liked doing our shows and I will put up yeah. more dates and we'll do more. Um, but yeah, like I just, I don't want to be. But I'm only doing one night and out. That's my new thing. That's, one night and out. I think and so I don't do the Sonoma good. Grill. You know, I'm out. I feel really bad. I'm sure Sonoma Grill is great. One of my favorite uh, <laughs> stories of you on the road is when you went down to the the hotel, whatever restaurants attached to the hotel, and you just didn't like the look of it or whatever. <laughs> and you said, and you, the guy was behind the bar. <laughs> the guy was behind the bar, and you're like, you know, I got, I'm actually going to go meet a friend. You know, uh, sorry, they just friend just called or something. Got to go meet a friend. And then you went up to your room and you ordered room service, and the guy who you told you were going to go meet a friend delivered it <laughs> to the room. So knew you were bullshitting. I okay, I totally remember. <laughs> it's it. my favorite. I walked into the restaurant yeah. that I thought was going to be like a nice restaurant of the hotel, mm -hmm. and it was literally like the size of this studio with like three sad white tables in it. That's it. Yeah. No windows. Mm -hmm. And I was going to be eating there. It almost looked like a break room in like a Las Vegas hotel. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And I was like, <laughs> yeah, I just, I just can't have this person just staring at me while yeah. like, I eat this. So the, yeah, so I felt so guilty that I, I left because he you know, like poured the water and yeah, stuff. Yeah. And then I was just like, I can't. I just think I need to be by myself with like my forensic files or yeah. whatever. <laughs> 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 and then he brought it up. That's the greatest story. Oh my god, I love it. Yeah, yeah I understand all the all the, you know, the cons of the road. Yeah, but I am doing it. What am I going to do? I love it. Yeah. All right. Frangiola dot fun and cover to cover is my podcast. Come listen to cover to cover. Oh, I do want to read one funny thing. Okay, so this past weekend we're end on this. I went to La Quinta where my sister lives. It was her birthday. Mm -hmm. We went to. The Sands Hotel and my favorite place, The Nest, okay? Because I have live That's, music and it's so fun. It's a restaurant in the Sands Hotel? Right next door to it. Oh. Part of it, yeah. So fun. And I posted just a photo of Shannon and I, just our faces. One of us by the pool, just our faces. And like some a pretty, like we could see the white snow-capped mountains next to the palm tree. Okay. That's kind of important to the comment that then came. And then I got this comment from Born Fine 10. <laughs> <laughs> I doubt pancake asses are coming back. Now, trust and believe it's good to know BBLs, Brazilian butt lifts, oh. may be finally going out of style. But let's not overcorrect with my flat ass, okay? I com a completely flat ass only works on a heterosexual male. That's good to know. Women look great with some butt. I don't disagree. Yeah. Like, Okay, I'll defend myself in a minute. Okay. Not thus craziness with the BBLs. A nice ass. Sorry, Heather, but hey, take a look and let's see who you'd relate to. Perhaps a Kristen Cavallari or some white fitness models? Okay, first of all, Kristen Cavallari, gorgeous, if you want to compare my body to hers. Uh -huh. I don't know what her ass is doing, but from the front, she looks she great. She looks cute, yeah. Um, I, I am white. It's fine to compare me to white people. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not a fitness model, so that's a compliment. I have. I am well aware I have a flat ass. I had a sister who right. told me all the time that I had a flat ass. I don't think it's all. I've seen worse. Listen, what's nice is I never have to look yeah, at it. Yeah, right. You don't it's behind it. me. Yeah. So I didn't even know it was a problem. Right. Until people started to point it out. Yeah. 
So I'm sorry if you're walking behind me at fucking Trader Joe's. Uh-huh. I'm sorry. Yeah. I've been married 22 years. Mm-hmm. I'm fucking over 50. Yeah. I don't want to lay flat on a bed recovering from a BBL. No. And I'm glad I didn't. I'm glad I don't have to take photos of me twisting around where I split, spread my butt cheeks and look at the camera and put that on yeah. Tinder. <laughs> I'm staying married for a reason uh-huh. because I don't want to get a BBL, uh-huh. okay? And I just, like, I'm sorry. I, yeah, I agree with you on all of it. And I, I'm like, I'm sorry. I'm like, I'm like, well, I'll say, I, I, this, well, this like, they act like, like They act like I'm walking around with signs saying, flat asses are in, yeah. get used to it. Like, mm-hmm. this is probably the same anger that, like, Lizzo gets when they're like, why are you happy being your size? Mm-hmm. She's like, because I am? Yeah, what can like, I Like, why are you walking around the earth, Heather, with your fucking flat ass? You're yeah. not that great. Well, this person was born fine. That's, that's you know. Um, that's her name. I'll say Biden. this. I'll say this. <laughs> and this is one thing I took away from my vacation in Hawaii. I was at a pool a lot, all week, yeah. every day, from you know 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Yeah. But there's a, bodies come in all shapes and sizes, and there are a lot of shapes and a lot of sizes. And there are very, very, very few that are good. You know what I mean? Like everybody <laughs> has got some sort of – and it's bright sun out there. Like there were some people with some – like the back, you said, I don't see my back. You don't see what's going no. on on your back. Like there was a lot of things. By day five, I'm like, that guy's got something there. There's a lot of growths. There was one guy with a thing and his, like a cyst or something. <laughs> oh, <what? laughs> yeah. And the same people, you see them every day because everyone goes for like a week. And I'm like, Jesus, here comes. I had to tell my wife. They're like, we got to move chairs. She's like, why? I'm like, the cyst guy is three chairs down. I can't look at that all day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, there's a lot of. I mean, I think. Do you think there were people um, at the Ritz Carlton in St. Thomas that were like, "Can we move down? The flat ass yeah. mom <laughs> is back with her two giant sons, <laughs> and I, I'm triggered by too tall of people and yeah. too flat of asses." <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. And I one doubt of my it. sons. I doubt it. You certainly. One of my sons' asses takes after me. It does. He, oh, really? And I. I said, look, I'm Is it so- Harry or William? If, it's William. You know what I mean? Okay. It's William. Yeah. And I, I said, look, I'm, you know, I'm sorry. Yeah. And Brandon got blessed with, with Peter's better ass. Well, I'll but, tell I you But, I mean, this. look, I, there's only so much I can do. The great thing about comments <laughs> online is you don't have to go far. You can just go down to Chris Heffel. Dot five where she says cheekbones for days. See? Thank you. There's Thank gonna you. be good ones and there's gonna be bad ones. I know. And this girl said happy birthday to my sister, a nice person. Yeah, What's her name? They're a good H O Emily. Yeah, H E Lee Emily. Yeah. yeah. Um anyway, yeah. Never oh. tried to say I had a good one. Well, Never. I have to say that I mean I you as far as like bodies go, it's a good one. Like if you took everybody's weird shapes and sizes together, mm-hmm. you're in the top five percent of good good bodies i do remember that when chelsea was on watch what happens live and it was back when we were still on on chelsea lately and there was an after show and someone was like i can't believe she said this maybe she maybe she went maybe we were salted but the the question came in and they're like why are you so mean to heather mcdonald or something and she's like because she has a terrible body. Yeah, what's up with your body? <laughs> that used to be her joke to everybody. Like, what's up you with your body? a terrible body. Yeah. And I was like, okay. Yeah. You know, giving birth twice, like in my yeah. 40s. Still like a size four at the time. Like, still, yeah, sorry. Still holding it together. I'm not athletic. Did I ever tell you about when I, I know I told you this story, when I was trying to get any kind of film work and I drove all the way out to like Pomona <laughs> to this guy. It's already great. <laughs> this guy's house. Yeah. He was okay. lived with his grandmother. Yeah, and he was doing. He said he was doing some film, something or other. Uh-huh. So I did a monologue from Harry Met Sally. Okay, and then he's like, "Okay, you now I need you to come back because the scene's going to require you to be like in a bathing suit." Oh boy! So I go and I at the time like one pieces were in. I borrowed yeah. my friends like really high cut, beautiful like blue one piece. Okay. And he said to me, as I stood there, 
again, unaware that I don't have a good ass because asses yeah. weren't even a thing that was talked about right. until like J Lo and then Kim. So yeah. like 2006, right. seven. Like Paris has a flat ass. Yeah, you don't. She was still yeah, killing asses it. Asses were not even a thing. Until. And so he goes, <laughs> he's like, um, he goes, first of all, like, you're the only one that, like, did a monologue. Like, you can, like, act. That's really good. Uh -huh. And, like, you're, like, your body's good from the front. Uh-huh. But if you could do some, <laughs> like, exercises or something uh -huh. for, sure. like, the back of you, like, squats or something yeah. like that. You'll get the part? <laughs> and I was like, okay. And then I just remember driving away and being like, there's no part. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, a guy in his mom's house in Grandma in Reseda. Oh, Grandma, yeah, Pomona. I, I can yeah. see the house. Yeah. Like, I, like I remember being in my Celica, and like back then, like I had to get like a Thomas guide, right. yeah. or he had to tell me all the different freeways to take to get there. <laughs> yeah, and this like is not how the casting process works. Steven Spielberg doesn't do it from his grandma's house. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, that is anyway. I love just this. embrace what Look you have. Look at you now. Look at you now. You're not. You know the catamaran's not enough for you anymore. <laughs> That's the life you're leading now. Flat ass or not, good for you. Thank you, Chris. I love you. I love you, and back. I love your ass. Uh, thank you. It's not much. <laughs>